So it, it does sound like, uh, again, we're not buying real, uh, real estate today, single family homes. We're, we're conserving. So that means it's going to get cheaper. Uh, prices are, are going to finally crack. Is, oh, is what I, 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 I don't think people appreciate um, that last September, there were no states in the United States that had rising, continuing jobless claims. Yeah. There are 47 I mean, out of the 51. So yeah. the unemployment rate, it, it's being suppressed, but every month we get the new jobs data report out, we're hearing, and open your ears to this. This is what I want your viewers to open their ears to, revisions. Yes. We just got out retail sales. June was revised down. July was revised. Revise, revise, revise. So if, if things are going to get as bad as as we think they are, then, then the, and if the recession's really real, then the stock market's finally going to figure it out. And if the stock market finally figures it out, and it's always the last to do so, then the 60% of people who are in homes who don't own their homes outright, Mm -hmm. they're going to say, what happened to my stock market portfolio? Oh, there's my home equity. Mm. It doesn't matter what your mortgage rate is if you're on a fixed income. And we know that baby boomers have more equity built up in their homes than any cohort out there. No doubt. When they go to monetize it, and if and when unemployment rises and people are forced out of their homes for economic reasons, you know, this whole undersupply narrative narrative could go away. And that's what we have to be mindful of. It's that there's real wealth that's been built up in residential real estate, real wealth. And if people move to attain that wealth, your average 60 plus student loan borrower, which was not a typo. 60 year old. Wow. 60 year old or, or and it's only like 4.3 million Americans, but it's still 4.3 million Americans. Mm-hmm. It's $3,600 a month. That's your average, excuse, excuse me, $3,600 a year. Pardon me. Pardon was, me. $3,600 yeah. a year. That makes me feel a little better. <laughs> Sorry. It is the 30 to 39 cohort that's $4,700 a year. Oh. Uh, so they're not buying homes either. Oh, no. We saw something really extraordinary in the month of August. And that was that, because you're right, people read the headlines. That's what they see. I've got to pay my student loan back. Yep. It's, interest is going to start accruing in September. I'm going to have to make my payment October the 1st. The U.S. Right. government saw a flood, a tidal wave yep. of people preemptively paying their student loans in the month Six of August. Billion, $6 billion, if the article I read. Exactly. That's coming from somewhere. Savings, discretionary, something. No, so you you stole my punchline. That's uh, coming from somewhere. Yeah. And we have to and 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 Kevin O'Leary and this whole employee retention credit. Oh, Carol. the IRS oh. commissioners figured it out. We went from twenty nine point eight billion paid out in the month of July to thirteen point six paid out in the month of August. Right now, September's running at a five point nine billion dollar rate. He's decided no more fraud. No more. Yeah. No more money. That money's not being going into the economy either anymore. So these are some big swing factors. If UAW goes on strike, if the government yeah. shuts down, there are, I mean, and it's all if California, which is fourteen percent of the U.S. economy, all pays their federal income taxes on October the fifteenth when they're due with a huge delay. All yeah. of these things are happening at the same time. 